In this video, I want to talk about the command design pattern, but before we get into that, a little bit of review. A design pattern gives you a way of approaching categories of problems. It's not a solution to a problem, it's a strategy for approaching categories of problems. Christopher Alexander came up with this idea in architecture, and from there it seeped out into lots of other areas, including object-oriented software development. So the short version of the command pattern is we want to encapsulate a request as an object. What I want to show you is a little example that motivates the desire for this pattern. I've put together an example that's based on a project that some of my students are working on this semester. It's a shop that sells items to adventurers. So uh, if we say we want to buy the longsword, we can see gold go down, buy the shield, gold goes down, uh, sell the longsword, gold goes up. Uh, so let's take a quick look at the implementation so you can see there's no real surprises here. In the player controller, I've set up uh, the gold and the reputation, and then I have a couple of utility methods for manipulating those. Um, the main interface is just a plain old UMG widget, and on the side here is where we put a different card for each item. So that's here. You can see there are the buy and sell buttons, and the implementation for those uh, simply goes and gets the player controller, and then says to uh, reduce gold or add gold based on the price of the item. Now, the thing we haven't really looked at yet is this undo button, which right now doesn't do anything at all. So stop for a moment and think about this. How would we be able to undo the buying or selling operation in the right order? This is one of the classic motivations for the command pattern. Our idea here is we want to encapsulate the entire request, the buying and the selling of the item, within an object. Okay, let's see what that might look like. I have already created a command object. Let's take a quick look at it. Uh, notice that this is an object and not an actor because it doesn't have any geometry, it doesn't have a position in the world. Uh, instead, all it has are two functions, execute and undo. Neither one has any implementation, and for both I'm sending along the controller as an argument because I know that, generally speaking, in order to execute or undo a command, I'm going to need access to that. My idea here is that my subclasses, which will represent specific commands, will override execute and undo. Let's go ahead and try that now. Let's try making a buy command. All right, so uh, if I'm going to buy a thing, I should probably know what the thing is. Let's add an item variable. And we'll make that exposed on spawn. And let's override execute. There is no apparent implementation, so I can get rid of this. All right, so when I buy an item, I should expect my gold to be reduced. So I can say reduce gold. By how much? Well, by the price of this item. That looks good. That's really, for my small example, what it means to buy an item. Now, if I had to do something like inventory management or uh, see how much weight my character can carry or something, I could do that in here too. But again, if you can follow my simple example, you should see pretty clearly how you can expand it. Okay, what does it mean to undo a buy command? Well, if buying reduces gold, it seems like this should just add gold. And again, how much? Well, the price of this item. There, that looks good. One of the other pieces that I put together ahead of time is this command stack component. And this just gives you a way to easily push and pop commands from a stack. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and add one of those to my player controller. Good. Okay, so from here now, we should be able to change the implementation of buying. So remember that in the original implementation, when we click the buy button, the idea of what it means to buy an item is represented inside of this widget. We're going to migrate that to a design where that implementation is encapsulated in the command object. So now what I'll do is construct an object, and this will be a buy item command. 
We have to give it an outer that may as well just be self here. And what's the item? Well, it's this item. Oh, here, I have it right here if I recombine these. Great. So that makes the command. Let's go ahead and execute that command. Notice one of the advantages I get here is that if I need to change the behavior of the by command, I don't actually have to change this widget. It's all encapsulated within that object. Right after executing this, I want to make sure that I also push it onto that stack. Oops, that's over here. And this is the command that should be pushed. Good. Well, that gives us enough pieces here that we can implement the undo button. So let's go back there. Here it is. That's the button. OK. When undo is clicked, let's get the player controller. Oops. Cast it to our uh, required type. Then we can get that command stack and pop the most recent command. That removes it from the stack and also gives us a reference to it. So of course here we should be able to just say undo. And that needs the controller of course too, so we'll just pass that along. Let's try it. Buy the longsword, buy the shield, undo should sell back the shield for 80, undo sells back the longsword for 100. So we'll leave it as an exercise for the reader to make the sell item case, but the idea here is pretty clear, I hope, that we've encapsulated what it means to buy within the command. Because all of my commands are children classes of BP command, I can easily manage them through something like a command stack. Now, again, if you think about this idea and extend it a little bit further, we could also do things like log all these commands to a database or show the history of commands on the screen. Um, once you have these commands in place, there's lots of interesting things you can do with them. I hope you found that interesting, and I hope this pattern is something you can use. If you're feeling a little bit more adventurous, I can show you how I would actually do it in C++. I'm a big fan of blueprint visual scripting, but there are certain things that are just a lot easier to do in C++ if you ask me. So here's another way to approach this whole thing. Now, one of the changes I made was I took the whole stats system, which in blueprint I had incorporated into player controller for just the sake of convenience. Now I have that in a subsystem. Uh, the implementation, again, is basically the same, right? I have gold and reputation and a bunch of utility methods. Uh, but because these are in a local player subsystem, any agent within Blueprint or here in C++ can go and grab the subsystem very easily. That's nice. Also, there's operations like array manipulation that in Blueprint I find to just be really arduous uh, for something that is semantically pretty simple. Um, so here is my shop transaction log, which is like my stack of commands. Um, notice here we can uh, log a command, which is pushing it, or, or we can pop it back off. And the implementation, to me, just looks much cleaner in uh, textual programming. Again, your mileage may vary, but I think this is all pretty straightforward. So here is the uh, item. I moved it from a blueprint struct into a C++ struct. No uh, major changes there, really. Um, my command is still a U object. Uh, now what I've done is I've annotated it as abstract to ensure that it cannot itself be instantiated. And I've made execute and undo into pure virtual methods. Uh, I'll be honest with you, it took me a while to find the documentation on how to do this, but once I found it, oh, I was delighted because I do like pure virtual methods. Here's buy command and sell command. Uh, of course, these will override, execute, and undo. Uh, they'll take an item, which is an expose on spawn variable, and the implementation does the obvious thing. Um, one thing I did here to make life a little bit easier is I took this long expression that gets the shop stats subsystem, and I hid it behind a macro so I could just use it twice here. 
So maybe that's interesting to you if you want to try to explore some of these things in C++. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this introduction to the command pattern. Happy programming!